everyone, welcome back to the XSP Green Monster channel. My name is Riley, and today we're going to be going over something that's probably the most asked question I get on my Instagram and in general, is how to get sponsors. I know this is kind of... A lot of people have different opinions on this, and this is just my opinion on the subject matter, but I'm going to get right into it, and we'll go over kind of... I have a lot of notes written down right here, so I don't forget anything because I could talk about this for a very long time, so I'll try and keep this video as short as I can while still covering all the topics I want to cover. And the first thing I want to just kind of go over quickly is the types of sponsors that I kind of see they're still existing. Obviously, I have experience with the car audio sponsors and kind of the car style sponsors, not too much with like clothing sponsorships or ones of that nature. So this is kind of geared towards the car guys, but I think most of the information will actually apply to anyone looking for a sponsor of any kind. Um, if you don't know, my car is sponsored by Excess Power Batteries. <laughs> They've been a really good sponsor for me. I think I've had them for about two and a half to three years now. I've had that sponsorship on the car. And, I'll, yeah. <laughs> so the types of sponsorships that I think still go on are the full sponsorships, what I refer to them as. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for them, but there's full sponsorships and there's what I just consider a sponsorship. Most, if not all, car audio are just sponsorships at this point. You don't, you're not getting anything for free. And I think most companies are moving away towards just giving out free items because it, they get advertising from it, but I don't think they're making a lot. And I'll kind of get into the perspective of the company later because I think that's a, something that a lot of people don't understand. You really need to understand to have successful sponsorships. But there's something I consider sponsorship and there's something I consider full sponsorship. Some companies definitely are still full sponsorships, which means you get free product, you get the new products, and there's not too much else to it. I mean, obviously each company has their own way of doing it, but I consider that there's kind of two types. There's a sponsorship where you get a discounted price or a um, warehouse price, so to say, with it, and then there's a sponsorship where you're getting free stuff, where you're not paying a dime for anything. So those are kind of two sponsorships that I think really, the two main sponsorships that still exist. Um, my experience with sponsorships is, obviously I had that one, I picked up another one, I had CT Sounds for a little while, um, four or five months or so, and I have had a pretty good experience with sponsorships so far. I mean, I haven't had any sponsorships where I regret being sponsored by the company. And, but I've also gotten turned down by a fair amount of companies that I have talked to about it. And I think that's a very important thing to know is that just because you have a nice car or clean build does not mean that every company you approach is going to sponsor your build. And I think if you're going into this with the mindset that, oh, well, my car deserves to be sponsored because of the time I put into it, you're, sadly, that doesn't mean much to companies. And that's something that I will cover, like I said later, is the perspective of the company. But... There's a lot of, I think, understanding might not be the right word, but a lot of things that you have to consider and think about when you're looking for sponsorships for your vehicle or for any kind. So the first big point, I have three main points to this, and the first big point I have is confidence. You do, you need to be confident in yourself. You need to be approaching companies. You need to be putting out your product or getting your car out on the pages and have confidence in the build that you created. If you don't have confidence in the product you created or confidence in yourself, you're, the companies aren't going to want to be with you either because you need to know that what you're doing is good. And I think that's a huge thing is having confidence in yourself, first of all, and knowing and putting yourself out there. I mean, to get these sponsorships, you really need to put yourself out there. You need to reach out to the companies. They're not very rarely, I think, will companies come to you unless you put a lot of your own time or a lot of your own money into whatever you're doing. So with the having confidence in yourself, obviously, like I've said, it's very important because most companies won't come up and approach you. You need to go up to the company. You need to put your time and your effort into getting that sponsorship. And I don't, I know that some people think that if you just sit around and you have a clean build or a clean car that they're going to come to you and that's possible. They might, but if you really want the sponsorships, you need to be proactive about it. You're not going to get sponsorships by sitting around and waiting for people. You get sponsorships by going out, introducing yourself to companies, showing companies your build, um, getting your build posted or featured on social medias. And that's a big part of this is that you need to promote yourself and promote your build. And 
it's important when it comes to that, it, a lot of this just comes down to my third point. So I'm trying to keep them in the points themselves. But the next thing is having confidence in your build. And I don't want to say that you should always think that your build is the best build out there because chances are it's probably not. But you do need to have confidence in the time that you put in there and say, well, I've put time in here and I've done the best of my capability at this point not saying they shouldn't be better. Most builds can always be better in some way. But have confidence that you did your best. That doesn't mean it is the best, but you did do your best and you were trying your hardest at your build. And even if it's not everyone's cup of tea, it's still what you want. So that kind of leads in the next one, which is that this sponsorship game is a game of opinions. And just because you like, let's say, a lowrider car does not mean that everyone's going to like a lowrider car or that everyone's going to like your lowrider car. It's simply, this is a game of opinions. Even if you like your build to the fullest extent, that does not mean that everyone has to like your build as much as you do. And they're simply not. Everyone has a different taste. Everyone has a different opinion that's really going to come out when it comes to sponsorships. If and you have to remember the company has an opinion too and just because they disagree that your build might not be available for a company does not mean that you should be upset about that or give up. It just means that that wasn't the company for you. If the company isn't as passionate about your build as you are, then it's obviously not the company you should be sponsored by. And I also think that is a very important thing is that you need to recognize that your build probably isn't the best build out there. There are, that, and again, it's really, persist to cars since that's where I feel like I have some experience with the sponsorships but you need to understand that your build on your car is probably not the best build out there it might be the best build to you and it might be the best build to a few select people or a few hundred or a few thousand other people maybe a couple million if you really have like a SEMA truck or something or a SEMA car or some of those the cars that really are some of the best built in the world because there has to be a best but just because you have passion for your build does not mean it's the best. And that's something that I've learned over time because I remember, and maybe I'll put up some screenshots right here of it, but I had a, I remember I rewired my engine bay once on my car and I thought it looked so good. The wires, I would love the way that they intertwined. I tried to like kind of weave them and I thought it looked so good and so was such a clean install in terms of the wiring in my engine bay. And at some point I redid it with, that was actually the one before the one I have currently, which I'll show now. So I'll show before and after, just so you guys can have an idea of what I'm talking about. And I'm sure a lot of people agree that the one before, my before shot was, it didn't look the greatest. But to me, when I did it, it looked amazing. I had put so much time into the wiring of that, into how the wires were going to move and to cutting them to the correct lengths. But the truth of the matter was, is that it didn't actually look that good. And when you look at the after shot of what I, again, right now, I feel like my engine bay looks very good, but that doesn't mean it can't be better. And that's a big part of this. You have to, I mean, you have to be your biggest critic to do well in this, or at least again, this is all in my opinion. I'm not saying that this is the law of sponsorships, but to me, I think you have to be your biggest crick. You always have to be looking at every single piece of your build and thinking, is this really the best that it can be? And if it's not, then you have to either put the time and effort into making it the best or pay someone to put the time and effort into making it look the best. And opinions change. I mean, my opinions change on my truck quite a few times, but like I said, I mean, you can see from the after pick, it looks much better now. I think that my engine bay looks a lot better. And when I look at my old pick of the engine bays I did where I thought it was so clean and it looks so good, it just, it didn't. And it's something that you have to accept that just because you feel like what you have right now is super clean and every company should want to have their name put on that, it simply might not be the case. And you, it's something that's very hard to see when you're looking at your build. But it's something that's very necessary for you to realize is that, again, just to restate this, is that your build is probably not the best. And that is where it comes into kind of my third point is the perspective of the company. And this is going to be a very broad point. I'm probably going to talk about this point the longest. Is that the another, my third biggest point of this is you have to think about this from the company's perspective. I'm going to go through that first on how they're going to view you as a person. 
companies are not generally going to want to sponsor someone who's always talking down to other people's builds, who's not accepting of other people's builds. Say that you like roll low rider trucks, but you hate lifted trucks. If you're on Facebook always bashing lifted trucks, then you're pro and they see that, then they're not going to be very happy with that. They don't want someone who is going to put a bad image on their company. And that's really where this part of it comes down to is that you have to be respectful of everyone's build and you need to show the company that they're someone that they can put their name on you and you are not going to disrespect other companies and you're also not going to hurt their company or their company's image because that's what companies are looking for. They're not only just looking for someone to represent their product, they're also looking for someone who's going to put a good image to their name because that's very important to companies. The second perspective of the company on your truck is that they have a lot of options. They can pick any car they want that's on Instagram, that's on Facebook, that's going to SEMA shows. They can pick any car they want to sponsor. And it goes back to that your build is probably not the best. So you need everything that you can get to go toward your build. And they're going to want the best. And I honestly, looking back on it, I'm very surprised I was sponsored by Access Power at the point in my build because looking back on it, my build was not the cleanest build. It was unique at that point in time but it wasn't the best that it could be and I know of a lot of other builds out there that they could have sponsored that look a lot better than my car did at the time but to kind of get continue what I was saying is that you need to take a look at your build from an outside perspective and think is this something that if I was a company would I want my name on this product if you have a car it audio install and wires are all over the place Excuse me. Your build is a mess. There's, you know, you have zip ties showing, although zip ties aren't necessarily a bad thing. There is a way to use them properly. But if your build is a mess and you know, like in the back of your mind, you kind of have a feeling like, you know, like this could be cleaner. If you're a company, you're not going to want to put your name on that. And it's kind of, again, you need to be your own biggest critic, especially when it comes to this, because you want something the company is going to want to put their name on. And again, companies won't always reach out to you. You need to reach out to the companies. They like, companies want people who have initiative. They don't want people they have to go searching for. They want people that want to run their product. So really, I mean, the perspective of the company is a very large part of this that you really need to take a look, kind of like step out of your own shoes and look at the shoes from someone who might be sponsoring your product. Or if you were looking to sponsor someone, maybe pick something that you don't like. So like if you are against, let's see, what could I use? If you're against a certain brand, say you're against Sundown Audio, say you put yourself in the shoes of Sundown since you don't like them. So you don't have a bias towards anything, but put yourself in the shoes of Sundown and say, if I was looking for a car to sponsor, what would I be looking for in that car? And what would you want to see in a build for you to put your name on? Because your company, the company is putting their name on everything you do, on your actions, on the way you treat other people, on your vehicle, on everything. They're basically putting a name on your life. And so they have to look at everything. So it's very important to kind of self-assess and if you need to change the way you're acting on social media or change the way you're acting at meets or competitions, then it might be necessary to do so for you to get the big sponsorships that you want. But again, it's the company's perspective and the company is really the one that decides here. And again, if you get turned down by a company, it shouldn't discourage you. It's their opinion that your car isn't the best and it might not be the best from their perspective but maybe it's best from another company's perspective. So go try another company. And some companies are, I've seen a lot more companies posting on social media asking for sponsors, saying it's a new year and we want to pick up some new sponsorships. So comment on there, send in resumes of your build to them. You know, talk to the guys, see what they're about. And that's where a lot of it will lead is you just need to be reaching out to people. And again, I'm sure you've heard me say a lot about social media and that's another part that companies are looking for. The companies are trying to put their name on you so that their name gets out there. Not saying that they don't care about you, but a big part of it is that they are trying to spread their name through advertising. That's what you get with us. That's what their deal of the sponsorship is that they get their name spread. And a good way to help companies realize that their name is going to get spread is to start a Instagram for your build or your car, whatever you're doing. Start a YouTube for it. 
do everything you can to get your name out there and I understand I can do a whole video on this if you guys want um, about how hard it is to start social medias and how hard it is to see that you know you're getting a follower a month or you're getting a subscriber every week and just see how slow you're building and yet there's people with 500,000 subscribers that are have sponsorships and are making money or 500,000 followers and they're getting sponsorships from it. It takes time. This stuff takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. But social media is a very important part to this because they want to see that when you receive their product, you're going to show unboxings of it. You're going to show the product being open. You're going to show installs of the product. You're going to show the product on your car. And you're also going to devote some of your car in the car world to their product. The sponsorship with Excess Power I have, I'm required to show sticker, have stickers and devote, a, I think it's one square foot of my vehicle to advertising for them. And I have no problem with that. I think that's completely fair. I mean, obviously I wanted them as a sponsor and in their case it was an application and some companies do have applications for it. But you should want to run that company. You don't want to be running a company that you don't like necessarily. If a company approaches you and you don't like their product and you don't like them, then don't say yes to them. It's that simple. You don't need to say yes to anyone. You don't owe it to anyone to say yes. But some companies require that you advertise on their vehicle. I think that's very fair of the companies because that's obviously, or whatever you're doing, they request that you advertise on that because, again, people see it on social media. Every time I post pictures of my car, they see my big team excess power stickers on my vehicle and that's advertising for them. That's income for them. Maybe every thousand views on my Instagram posts, they get one purchase product. That's still money in their pocket and that's money that they receive from the advertising they're giving me, from the sponsorship that they gave me. So a big portion of this is recognizing the company's perspective on this. They need something that they can advertise on. And again, this, I'm not saying that they only care about this for the money, but that is part of the game. They are running a company and they do need to make income and sponsorships are part of that income. But they do, I mean, I feel like Excess Power cares about me. I mean, they spread the word. They help my build get bigger. They help share my product to other people. Not saying that, I mean, I would never switch off Excess Power batteries because I do believe, even aside from the sponsorship, that they do make some of the best car audio batteries on the market today. That's something you should think. If you're running a product, you should really think that that product is one of the best products on the market. So, I mean, and again, yeah, like, I mean, I'm at uh, 2,200 followers and some change on Instagram right now. And I think that that definitely plays a role when you're looking for sponsorships. They see that you have these followers that are viewing your posts, giving you likes, and when their product shows up on that, that is possible revenue for them. So that social media is very important. YouTube is very important. That's a good way to get product out. Instagram, Twitter, any social media platform. Build a page for your build, just for your build. You can have personal ones. You can have ones for your build. I share my personal one with my build one. It's worked for me so far, but I do think that a better option sometimes is sharing, having two pages and start it, get people looking at it, you know, try and tag other things that have to do with it so they might share your, so you get featured on Instagram as an example, because that helps share the name of your vehicle and it helps get your vehicle out there to more eyes, to more sponsorships, to more followers. And that can be a huge help, huge help. You want your build to be recognizable. You want people to know of it before they sponsor it. You, again, it's a very important part of this. You know, if you're like when I was applying to Excess Power, say you were, you want to apply Excess Power, you want Excess Power to have seen your build come up on their Instagram a couple times. You want to have them have seen other people share your build to think your build is cool. Because then they're gonna look at it and they say, well, if we put our name on this, then these people obviously are gonna see that and see if this person likes it and it's gonna get shared a lot. And that's, again, that's a huge part of this is recognizing that you have to look at this from the company's perspective that you want them to sponsor you. And if you have any doubt in your mind that something you're doing or something in your vehicle or something's not clean enough or you're not treating people like there's something that's like, oh, well, like a little while ago, I said this to a person and it was kind of rude and I really shouldn't have done that. Then you need to think about that because companies look at that. They'll look at your Facebook. They'll see what you are saying to people, they'll see your comments on other posts. And if you're saying mean things about builds or you're just like bashing other companies, they're probably not gonna sponsor you. And again, I could keep going on about this for a very, 
very long time because I have a very strong opinion about this. And again, I want to restate that my opinion is not law here and everyone has their own opinion on this. But what I've done has, I'm happy with the way it has worked out for me and it might help some other people learn a few tips and tricks. And you don't have to take anything in this video as law, but you know, there are some things that I think a lot of people would agree with me on and you know, take it with a, it's kind of my two cents on the whole problem and you can disagree with it, you can like it, but you gotta go about things in your own way too. If you find a way that works for you, then keep going with it. If you do something that works, then just keep doing it because it worked. There's no reason to change something that works. And yeah, I think that's about all I have for sponsorships. Again, if you guys want to hear a little more or have any questions on it, comment down below. Any questions and I'll respond to those if you guys have any questions or concerns that I didn't address in this video. And I think at the since the end of this, I'll do a quick update on the truck as well for anyone that stayed this long in the video. Um, it should hopefully be done this next week. We kind of figured out the brake problem. It needs a new master cylinder. It just wasn't the master cylinder currently on the truck just wasn't pushing enough fluid to actually activate the brakes. So we we think we've solved the problem. It needs a disc disc proportioning valve and a disc disc master cylinder out of a newer body style truck. So that's kind of where we're at the truck. So hopefully by next weekend you guys will be seeing some install videos on the truck and seeing the walk around of the truck because I've been meaning to do that for a long long time and just about since I've started doing YouTube my truck has been in the shop so should be coming out soon if you guys enjoyed the video please give it a big thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't already or if you enjoy my content and I'll see you guys next time